This is chocolate. This is where chocolate comes from. I'm gonna show you all the steps to get from this to this. I'm Ariel Johnson, I'm a flavor scientist, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make chocolate from pod to bar. This is a cacao pod. The fruit of the Theobroma cacao tree. Inside this pod, we got sugars, we got proteins, we got fats. We have everything in here that we need to make a chocolate bar. It's just packaged up in inaccessible forms. We're gonna unlock flavor by fermentation and roasting. We're gonna create texture through grinding, conching, and tempering. I, I, I will explain what all of these things are later as we go. So we just kind of like separate it. There's this thick kind of husky material. It looks almost like a delicata squash. <laughs> Inside this pod, we've got the cacao seeds coated in a layer of fruity pulp, and you can actually eat just the pulp if you want. Mmm! Almost like a guava-like flavor, but what we're really excited about is the stuff that's inside the seeds. It's like a little bitter, but mostly just bland. The fat in here already, it's got like a slightly waxy, nutty texture. That's actually gonna be the basis of the texture of the uh, chocolate bar. Usually when we talk about plant fats, you might be thinking of a liquid oil, like olive oil or something a bit greasy and semi-solid at room temperature, like coconut oil. What cacao fats are able to do that's really special is crystallize into a nice snappy structure that melts just below our body temperature. For chocolate, we start with this, but you're gonna see it takes a lot to go from this form of bean to something that is delicious tasting. Fermentation is transformation by microbes. Single-celled organisms that live in the air, on our skin, on the outside of these pods, everywhere. The pulp has sugar in it. That is excellent food for the microbes that are gonna transform this for us. Doing the fermentation usually happens on or very near the farm where the cacao is grown. Often on the farm, you would actually do the fermentation wrapped in banana leaves. This is a particularly delicious way of doing it. The leaves have some of the microbes that uh, make it very tasty on their surface. We're just doing it in a bowl. We're just gonna cover this to protect it from molds and things we don't want, and then we'll come back to this in about a week, and then we'll have fermented cacao. The benefit of this really complex process, we gotta break proteins down into their component parts called free amino acids. The free amino acids don't have a lot of flavor on their own, but create an insane number of flavor molecules. I can see that it's like turned a bit browner. Um, a lot of the pulp has kind of fermented off of these beans and become liquid. Whew. Kind of smells like uh, a little bit like vinegar and cheese and natural wine, maybe. That comes from acetic acid. Uh, that is particularly essential in the process of uh, breaking down proteins to get amino acids for roasting. If I asked you to taste them right now. Yeah, I'll taste it. it. Will you? This is like not even ranking on the list of weirdest things I've tasted, so. I'll give it a taste for science. Hmm. It actually tastes better than it smells. Maybe a little cheesy. Not a lot of flavor differences. We're not really expecting flavor differences. Chocolate is pretty unique in that we put it through this fermentation stage and then process it further to get like the real flavor development. We dry them and then they'll be ready for roasting, which is where the real flavor development happens. Put these in the oven at about 275 Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. In the heat of the oven, amino acids come together with sugars and react. This is called the Maillard reaction. When amino acids react with sugars in the Maillard reaction, they create flavor molecules that are caramelly, roasty, almost burnt. The Maillard reaction creates flavor and color in basically anything browned and heated. We've got toast, coffee beans, roasted meat, all of them comes down to the Maillard reaction. So, no Maillard reaction, no chocolate flavor. No free amino acids, no Maillard reaction. No fermentation, no free amino acids. So, no fermentation, no chocolate flavor. In terms of flavor chemistry, this is one of the most complex foods you can make. With the uh, chocolate made kind of brittle by roasting, it breaks down really easily into cacao nibs. We 
have now are cacao nibs. You can eat these. You'll see cacao nibs on top of desserts or as a little added texture in fancy chocolate bars. Yeah, that's definitely chocolate. <laughs> We've done pretty much everything we need to do to make these taste like chocolate. We just need to grind them for approximately forever to get them uh, smooth and delicious. These cacao nibs are full of the fats that will make the chocolate bar barry. We just need to free them by liquefying them and grinding the particles up very, very small. We're gonna start that process of getting to chocolate texture by grinding up these cacao nibs in a food processor. It's starting to stick together as like more fats get squeezed out. It's also starting to smell amazing. That looks pretty good. We've got it to where the particle size is kind of sandy. We can see like some glistening cocoa butter kind of leaking out of the solids. Not unlike peanut butter where we've taken a fatty seed and uh, cut it into tiny, tiny pieces till it's held together by its own fat. We want to get it much, much smaller. For that, we're going to rely on the super advanced technology of smashing it underneath rocks for a very long time. This is a melangeur. We've got these quite heavy rotating stones that spin in this direction and around in circles on a stone bottom, and they grind things into tiny particles quite effectively. The process is called conching. People have been eating cacao as drinks and other forms for thousands of years, but the texture that we associate with chocolate only really became possible with the invention of conching in 1880. It's important to add it only a little bit at a time so we don't overwhelm the machine. And then we're gonna grind it between its stone rollers for a very long time. It's very aromatic. It's really pushing all the smells and flavors into the air. It's actually heating up from the friction of grinding alone. Some of the uh, less delicious molecules we made during fermentation, like acetic acid, which you might know as vinegar, uh, essentially boil off over the course of conching. So it's been rolling for about 10 minutes and we can already see that the cocoa butter, which had kind of been holding the uh, ground chocolate together in a hard mass, that has melted out. So it actually has a very like fluid texture right now. We need to grind it until the particles of cacao are under about 20 or 30 microns in diameter. To give you a sense of that scale, human hair is between 70 and 100 microns in diameter. Down at that size, your tongue has a lot of trouble actually like perceiving the particles as particles. To get this where we want it to be, we're gonna have to run and grind it for anywhere between eight and 24 hours. We have conched this for 24 hours or so, and uh, as you can see, hardly any visible particles. We got them nice and small. Now it's time for tempering. Tempering is the process that we do to make sure the solid chocolate is nice and shiny and has a nice uh, snappy texture to it. As an example, this is what untempered chocolate looks like. The most noticeable thing are these like white swirls on the surface. That texture is called bloom, uh, so you could say that this chocolate is bloomed. What you're seeing on a molecular level is chocolate in the wrong crystal structure. Fats and cocoa butter, as they solidify, are able to form any of six different crystal structures. And tempering is the process of making sure that that crystal is the crystal that we want. They each have successively higher melting points. Crystal forms one through four are crumbly and not very pleasant. Crystal form five melts at about 93 Fahrenheit. So when you put it in your mouth, it's like just below your body temperature. And it has that like beautiful, snappy, shiny texture. Crystal form five is the sweet spot. We get to form five by heating the chocolate just enough and stop just short of the melting temperature of form five. So there's like barely simmering water in the bottom of this pot. We're going to use that to very, very carefully melt the chocolate to about 90 degrees Fahrenheit and not any higher. I'm gonna keep checking the temperature and if it looks like it's going to overshoot that 90 degree mark, I have this bowl of ice water here to stop it in its tracks. This is the point where it usually can go wrong, where uh, in your eagerness to uh, melt out the bad crystals, you actually overshoot and melt everything. I just measured it and we're at 89 right now, so it's pretty much ready to roll. What you end up with is liquid chocolate with a small number of exactly the right crystals. This chocolate is tempered and ready to mold. When we let it cool, that small number of form five crystals seeds the fats in the rest of the chocolate, letting them line up in exactly the right crystal structure. 
Chocolate's poured into the molds and we're ready to let it cool until it is solid and shiny. I'm both excited and nervous to try this. It's solid, it's shiny, it's all one color and doesn't seem to have bloomed at all. I think we got a good temper on it. Let's see if it snaps. Oh yeah, it worked. Mm. Yeah, uh, we developed really great chocolate flavor and uh, the correct temper is there so it melts really smoothly in my mouth. Mm. We went on a very long journey to get here. Started with the ripe pod, went through fermentation, drying, roasting, grinding, conching, and then finally tempering till we're here. This looks simple, but I feel uh, flavor-wise that I can taste each of the thousand flavor molecules that are in this thing. Having taken it from whole pod to bar, I have a huge new appreciation for what actually goes into the process.